Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 as, well, I don't know who I'm going to be playing yet, but we are going to be playing Normal Mods, Colorized Historic Moments, Enhanced Mod Manager and Secret Acts, Simple UI Adjustments, Purely Cosmetic Mods. We've done a few non-naval games recently, so I'm going to go ahead and set up a small continents eight player game with 12 city states and maximum disaster intensity on deity difficulty and we'll leave pretty much everything else normal. What I might do is put the sea level to low. Now, you know what? Maybe I'll put it to high so there's more water. Yeah, let's let's have a naval game, right? We'll do small continents, high sea level, and uh, we'll jump right in. I'm just going to pick a random sieve. There is the game seed and all that sort of stuff. Probably won't matter, though, because I will be just randoming. Uh, we did roll America, but we literally rolled like one of the few conditions where I'll just straight up re-roll is when I see desert and tundra on my starting location. It's just an insta re-roll, dude. This time we rolled Persia and I've already played Persia recently, although this is like a very interesting starting location. If there was like a piece of flat desert around, I would definitely take this. But I'm thinking again, I don't want to play Persia because I've already played them recently. I would totally play Gilgamesh right now, but look at this starting location. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just going to keep re-rolling until I find one I want. This is the kind of start that I can get behind. We are playing as Matthias in the Hungarian Empire. We've got an awful lot of very nice land. We even have the potential for a... Um, what do you call those things when there's a thing between two continents? A canal? We've got a canal city over here. Taking a look at the places that we could settle. We've got fresh water all the way around here. I don't really see an advantageous place to move to. Like, I would really like to be coastal. But the problem is if I move coastal, I'll have zero production for the majority of the game. I won't be able to build any boats, however, if I don't go coastal until at least I get a second city out or build a harbor. And harbors take quite a while to build. This is a little bit unorthodox, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cross the river to this tile. I am moving away from some of these really nice tiles, but I'm getting closer to these woods and two to uh, food production tiles, which I think is the right move here. Let's go ahead and settle right there. There we go. We got our city. We got a little bit of error score. And in terms, ah, look at that. See, so now we're working a two food, two production tile. Not an ideal start so far. I'm going to pick up just one scout so I can learn a little bit more about my surrounding area. Okay, this is a dead end. That's unfortunate. I was hoping that maybe there was a little bit more of the continent over there. Guess I was wrong. And I'm banking on being fairly isolated, so I might go for early writing, even though animal husbandry is usually a better idea because it opens you up for being able to go for archery. You know what? Just on the off chance I'm not alone on this island, I guess I'll get animal husbandry. Hey, we found Brussels. Now, finding Brussels actually might change what we want to do because they give me plus two production in my capital when building wonders, buildings, and uh, stuff like that. So if I were to pop in the monument, normally this would take, you know, uh, some quite long amount of time. It's, it's roughly a uh, code of laws. It would take about 15 turns to build a monument. Uh, from the start of the game but since we found brussels we're going to go for the early monument to take advantage of this extra production which will give us extra culture which means we'll unlock all these other things quite early and normally i would delay my monument for quite a while this will lower our ability to scout and kind of lower how much scouting we get but the upshot is we'll get a very very fast government oh, come on did you really have to stand there on the tribal village dude come on <laughs> Okay, he stood away and, ah, okay, so we got a free scout from that. That's actually a really good deal. So we got the monument and a scout out, which means we can probably go straight for a settler and start just filling up this land with our uh, nation. One downside to where I decided to settle is that there's not a whole lot of room over here on the east side for cities. It might be worth it to kill Brussels fairly early into the game. Monument finished in the capital. I am not going to put more production into the scout. I think I'm going to go straight for the settler. Small potential for a coastal Petra here perhaps or else I just settle on the silver and use these for districts. Not entirely sure what I want to do here but we'll leave that for now. There's animal husbandry. Did we hit any horses nearby? I don't think we I see a single horse in the vicinity. That's a little bit unfortunate. We're not going to be able to... Oh, there's some over here. I could send a settler over there to grab that. And if I was feeling really kind of just like silly, I could settle on the horses themselves and then like canal later on in the game. We'll deliberate about that. There is Code of Laws. So let's go ahead and plug in... Now, do I want to get God King? I think I'm going to plug in God King to get a, a Pantheon this game. And I'm also going to plug in Discipline. Let's get to work on clearing this Barbarian encampment now that we have Discipline plugged in with the plus five combat strength. I think it would be very nice to get an early trader online to trade with uh, Brussels so I think we'll work on foreign trade. We'll keep hammering this guy to get rid of him and I'm doing a little bit of scouting with this guy. Maybe it would be a good idea to scout down here just in case there might be more land down to the south. All right clear the barb camp. Lovely we get military tradition we get a promotion 
and we get a little bit of gold. Now, in terms of purchasing, what would make sense? I would probably like to purchase a builder if I could get enough money, either that or a trader. It really depends on which comes first. I don't really have a whole lot of tiles that I can improve because I've only researched pottery and animal husbandry. Let's move you forward a tile and then take the battle cry promotion. All right, enemy scout came in for a fight. Let's get that kill right there. Lovely. And we'll keep scouting with this guy. Oh no, there is not room. There might be one. If there's one more tile to the south, I would definitely settle a city here. Damn. So this kind of like occupies an awful lot of the land. Let's kind of see if we can plan out a settlement strategy here so far. I'm definitely thinking that a city will go over here on this area. And I think probably want to cram as many cities into this land as possible. So if I put a city there and I put a city right here on the silver, I won't be able to settle the horses, but I could definitely settle on like, like this tile up here, perhaps. These are just tentative so far. I'm not sure if this is exactly what I want to do but it's kind of along the lines. I actually, if I reshuffled these a little bit, like if I moved this city over to this desert tile and I deleted you, I could cram another city in here. For example, if I settle right here on this woods tile, I could then get another city somewhere maybe on like this Plains Hill tile, for example. So that's kind of the settling strategy that we've got so far for our, our, our little island. Also be popping down a city. I may as well plug it like right there, I think is gonna be where it goes. Now, which city am I gonna settle first is the big question. Still not sure, I'll have to think about that one. Oh, we also found Bandar Brunei, but we were not the first to find Bandar Brunei. So that's worth noting. Looks like the Great Bath has been built. We have also done most of the scouting. Now I'm just going to run along the coastline just to get any last little bit of information because stuff like these things, the crabs out here, that's going to uh, kind of change how I might want to settle if I find those things. Not a whole lot of fresh water over here. I think I'm going to run over and settle that city. I've got 11 turns until I unlock writing and I think I'd like to get a second settler out or else go for a granary. I think I'm going to go for the second settler out before I go for um, the campus. And I do want to get a campus fairly early because a lot of the naval stuff is pretty expensive in terms of technology early in the game. So getting a campus out can be a big help. Foreign trade is done. And you know what? It's time to get ourselves a trader. It's 170 gold, but he will pay himself off over time. And I think that's a worthwhile investment. We're only getting three gold per turn right now out of Brussels. But again, over time, that will pay itself off. It'll take mm, somewhere in the region of I, I don't know exactly what is it like at its current rate of gain it would take a very long time for it to pay itself off but now we have 9.4 gold income which kind of opens us up with other opportunities looks like a barb camp appeared down here south of brussels i think brussels will be able to handle that i will send my warrior down there just to have a little peek and i'm going to continue exploring settler is in position we will settle in place now is this the right place there is actually a very nice harbor right there so i think this is a perfectly acceptable place to set down let's do a little bit of pin planning all right we'll definitely put a harbor right here now it's a question of do i want to go for the monument or the granary in here first you know what i think i think i'm going to go monument granary although this is a coastal city it needs the housing so i think i'll go granary monument yeah 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 i think that's better if, if a city's on freshwater i would go monument granary um but if it's off freshwater i think granary monument is the right move now that we've picked up riding i'm going to get to work on sailing because i need to start getting out onto the water which means we're going to be placing the campus down and i think we're going to be putting a campus right here on this hill tile yes it kind of sucks that we're giving up a hill but the most more important thing is that we're going to be able to get extra science to get up to these technologies that will be meaningful for us now that we've researched early empire enough to get the boost i'm going to switch over to craftsmanship to start saving for that because i should be able to get this boost probably not within five turns but i'll be spending a lot of time building campuses anyway so i don't need it within five turns the next city i think is going to go over to here because i'd like to get myself a builder out of this city although i could make the argument of going up to the northeast yeah let's go up to the northeast i like that idea a little bit better in terms of pantheon there are some actually really nice choices here god of the sea would be great the free settler just is always so good though like you're getting any extra settler like a few turns early without having to build it is like so damn nice on the other hand i could get a free builder it's really it's really really tough to make this decision i feel like though getting the god of the sea is pretty important for me this game because i'm going to be working a lot of fishing boat tiles and I'm not going to be able to getting a lot of production otherwise. On the other hand, it's a free goddamn settler. I don't have a whole lot of room to settle anyway, so I think getting the free settler isn't a big deal. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up the God of the Sea, even though I'm not getting benefits from it right now, I will be getting benefits from it in the near future. I basically plan on purchasing a builder fairly soon in a lot of these cities. Right, let's go ahead and get to work on 
currency. No, why would I, why did I say currency? It was because it was boosted. It was just like on autopilot. What we want to do is we want to get to astrology, celestial navigation, and shipbuilding. Those are the things that we want to pick up. Looks like Brussels cleared out that barb camp, so we don't need to worry about it. Hey, and we ran into the galley from Akkad. Now that is a militaristic city state that we had not yet met. So that's very interesting. The nice thing about Brussels is it's also helping us build this cap campus. There is early empire. Now, I think we have our Pantheon and we're about to finish things. I'm going to plug in urban planning just for a few turns while we build the library. And then once we have the library, we'll switch over to something else. Um, Am I going to get a crown? Am I going to get a builder in time to get this improved? I could throw down like a triple farm here in Buddha and just get the city growing like crazy. Actually kind of an appealing idea. What if I did that and then plugged in Pingala? You know what? That has a certain appeal to it. The problem is I wouldn't be able to build settlers fast, so probably better. Yeah, I'm not sure. Now this city again, monument to granary. You could make an argument for a galley or a builder and uh, I'm going to accept that argument for the galley. I'll get one galley first and then I'll go into this. And in fact, I should have actually plugged in the 100% production towards thingy card. So I'm going to work on craftsmanship. I'll skip getting the boost. It was a mistake to get a Dark Age, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead. I think I'm going to plug in free inquiry here because I am building a uh, building that will give me science yield. And I'll also get Eureka's from uh, triggering thingy medoodles. Uh, Eure uh, blah, blah, blah. I'll get gold. I'll, I'll get error score from triggering Eureka's, not thingy medoodles. Okay, there's craftsmanship. We're going to quickly swap out discipline and plug in maritime industries and then set the policy agenda so we can get this galley in six turns and we'll probably get ourselves a second galley in pex time to get to work on state workforce that'll be a nice one to pick up the crew of the galley from hungary has set on its voyage library finished in buddha we'll get to work on some more settlers once state workforce is finished we'll plug in the settler production card and uh, I only need three settlers to finish off my own personal island, but we might find more places to settle throughout the game. Unfortunately, I can't embark any of my regular old units, but you know, I can get my galleys out there looking for land. There is state workforce. We'll get to work on political philosophy. We will also plug out urban planning and plug in colonization. Excellent. Thank you for that. Unfortunately, I still am only uh, just finishing my trade route here. Now it's plus four, so what I might do is send this over to Pex, uh, or sorry, Saves it, because that's a little bit further. You might get a little bit more gold out of a longer trade route. I'm not sure exactly how that whole mechanic works. Oh dear, a barbarian encampment appeared underneath one of my pins, and that's why I didn't see it. Let's see if we can't get both of my units over here to start fighting that off. All right, let's trade with Brussels. That will be plus three total gold, plus four rather, but I'll get another road, which is helpful. And I definitely think I found an island worth settling. I'm trying to just make it mental note about where the best position on this island would be to settle it would either be down here near the cattle i think on the cattle tile to pick up all these tiles or else it would be over here to pick up all of these tiles and i think i'm going to settle on the cattle because i could settle another city right there so on the cattle tile you will go there now these are going to be sort of maybe later on cities but they're speculative right these are kind of what i'm thinking about doing i'm not sure if it's what i am going to do but it's definitely uh, potentially on the cards right let's get to work on this barbarian encampment and uh, start clearing it out. Hit there, step over, and it should be dead next turn. Moderate flood, one of the tiles was fertilized, plus four food there now, excellent. Let's clear this up. Great job, let's fortify, let's do a little, yeah, let's just fortify. All right, we found a lot of tundra up here. Tundra is really not something I'm interested in, although it could be something that Canada is interested in. I didn't see where their cities were, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get a bit of a kill on this guy. You will attack there, then you'll finish him off. Brilliant, we cleared this out, and these, now these guys need to heal up. We've got total control of this island, and we're looking forward to getting control of more islands. Right, so we got a second galley that we can start exploring with. Do we want another galley is the question, because we still have that card plugged in. They are expensive, they cost one gold per turn, and we have 380 gold in the bank. I would kind of like to get my government plaza, and I think I would like to place it out in the sort of central area of my empire where the all three of these cities could take advantage of it. But I think I'm just going to place it right there. This is as good a spot as any. It's not an amazing spot, but it doesn't cover up any tiles. It didn't cost me too much. I could, I could purchase a builder right now, um, but I don't really have a whole lot of tiles to improve. I guess um, I could switch away from Celestial Navigation and purchase the builder and maybe improve both of these tiles, both of these fishing tiles to get... Um, 
the boost for do, 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 celestial navigation. New delegation is most welcome. Thank you very much. Right, pop out into the water and we'll get these improved. Uh, I can't walk through Brussels territory anymore. That's unfortunate. It's going to make scouting a little bit more difficult. Settler done. We're going to send you over to here. Excellent. And we want another couple if we can get them. Might be a good idea to get Magnus in the capital um, and place him in there and then promote him one more time. All right, fishing boat online, plus one food, plus one production. This tile is now very, very nice. Looking really, really good. It's going to give me a lot of gold. I'm going to have a lot of gold this game, and that's kind of the objective when you're going for any sort of naval game, is to focus on your gold income. Coastal cities naturally produce a lot of gold, so you're going to want to try to maximize that. There's political philosophy. I'm going to go ahead and plug in Classical Republic for the extra great people points. I'm also going to go ahead and plug in urban planning as well as Ilkum. Although you could make the argument maybe for isolationism, but I'm kind of producing settlers right now. Tile purchasing cost. I think I'll just go for builder production or maybe, you know what? I'm going to plug in unit maintenance and charismatic leader. Now that we have political philosophy, our next step is to perhaps move onwards by grabbing military tradition. Right, so we improved the uh, second fishing tile here, which gave me the boost for celestial navigation, which means we can now, now, now place down our harbors. And that is something that we definitely want to do. Now, could I improve, if I improved another crab tile, I think that would be actually worthwhile. So let's do it. It'll cost me a little bit of gold right now, but over the course, look at this, I'm already making 20 gold per turn, which is a really solid amount of gold to be making just from like city production. And now this city is working three really nice crab tiles and it also has a decent amount of housing. And so it's gonna be not the most productive city, but it's gonna make a lot of gold, which I'll be able to translate into purchasing. Let's grab a granary and a monument. Okay, we're gonna place a harbor here in Sezid. We're not gonna build it right away. Well, are we? We could rush down that harbour and get ourselves maybe something like the Great Lighthouse, maybe get ourselves just a regular lighthouse. Um, question is, how important would a builder be to grab in this city? Well, if I grabbed a builder, I could improve one crab tile. It only takes seven turns, and that would be a pretty good crab tile to be able to work. So I am going to do that. I want to be working as many of these fishing boat tiles as possible because they're worth a lot of gold. And believe it or not, gold is very, very valuable. Hey, look, we found the Maori. Wow, what a sieve to find on this map. I think it's going to be unlikely that we go for a domination victory this game so we're probably going to do some sort of other victory uh, which means I'm going to step away from the warlord's throne and instead work on the ancestral hall or the audience chamber I'm not sure which one I want to do yet that is the tough decision that I have to make and rather than make that tough decision I'm just gonna like do something else <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could get a settler in here while I deliberate. Let's pop a person into Bandar Brunei or yeah, let's pop one into Bandar Brunei. We get a nice little envoy there. That'll get us an extra four gold per turn, which is a really nice deal. We're up to four citizens in our capital, which means we can place another district. And I think the second district I would like to wait. No suitable zone for the district? I can buy a tile, surely. Where would I like to put this harbor? Ooh, if I put the harbor here, when I settle this city, it'll get adjacency from this city being settled. I like that idea, so we're going to take advantage of that little quirk of the game's mechanics. That even if I settle a city right here, this city will own this tile because it already built a district there. Actually, somebody asked me a question about that in one of my previous series, and I never answered it because I'm a dum-dum. We're about to be able to embark our units, so let's get them ready to go and grab these tribal villages and stuff like that. There's another island. This could be a Petra island. It would be a very, very bad island to start with, but eventually it would be kind of okay. Um, maybe if I settled, it would need a builder. If I settled right here, I'd grab all the land tiles, although there is an argument to be made. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I might do something like this, settle here and settle on the horses to a double city, kind of like Crete or something. Like a miniature Crete. Hello, America. We would like to sample your hospitality. Now that we have shipbuilding, let's go ahead and think about what our next moves are. I think there is an argument to be made for going towards construction and bronze working and all this sort of stuff. There's also an argument to be made for going towards apprenticeship. I'm really not sure how we're going to plan to win this game just yet, but it is a sort of naval game. So it's either going to be a naval kind of domination. There's nobody nearby for me to attack, however. So I think this is going to be some sort of passive game. And it's definitely not going to be a religion game because I never got a religion. So this is probably going to just default to be a science game. Uh, which is going to involve an awful lot of settling. Let's get to work on bronze working. It might unlock iron. It might get us a little bit of extra science from that iron. So I think it's worthwhile to head that direction. Okay, we can finally embark with our units and start picking up some of these nice things on these islands. Looks like there's already a religion over here to the west. That's where America is. I, I don't want to commit to a domination victory until I know where people's stuff is. Okay, we're finding out more and more about America. I'm not seeing a whole lot of coastal cities though. So a naval domination just might not be really possible because it's only really doable... Um, to go so hard for it 
Um, now, what we could do, this is actually a really interesting strategy that you can do on naval maps, is because you often spend a lot of time on the top half of the tech tree when you're going for a naval game, you can actually transition from, like, caravels and frigates into early flight into early advanced flight and basically skip the entire bottom half of the tech tree because like if i click on advanced flight you can kind of see that i can skip like the majority of the bottom half of the tech tree and get all like if you see there's, there's no numbers on the bottom half i can basically skip iron working and go straight to advanced flight right and this is a strategy i actually did um a long long time ago in my norway in one of my norway games it was a very very long time ago where basically you get as much science as you can. You go for like universities, uh, you go for industrial zones, you go for harbors. And those are like the three core districts you go for. You go for campuses, harbors and industrial zones. And then you pump out as many boats and like production and stuff like that and science as you can get. And then you go straight for advanced flight and then sort of use a late game uh, city hopping with boats and stuff like that. And then have a few like mel like have a few normal units thrown in. Typically, it'll be like AT crews or if it's not AT crews, it'll be something like the, um, the, I'm pretty sure there's a cavalry unit here. It'll be something like knights because they're nice and fast and they can kill cities pretty easily. But you know what? Instead of making the decision right now, I'll upload this video, see what you guys think, and then uh, we'll make a decision on that strategy. Anyway, I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.